Hello, pet parents. Robert Semro here. You meet so many wonderful people at all these different events. I've got to tell you, our next guest is one of those that I'm actually very humbled by. He has changed this industry in so many different ways. And if you have a pet, you've experienced that change. Maybe you didn't know it, but I am honored to be joined by Dr. Roger Mugford. Roger, I've got to say, it is really humbling to look at your career and see all that you've done. But before we go backwards, I want to start here with today. What are you most passionate about right now? The thing that I want to see is every person have the right to have a dog and enjoy the pleasure of animal companionship. Because I came to this industry as a clinical psychologist, very interested in all the payoffs and the benefits of the companionship that pets bring to us. You know, look at some of the medical benefits. We've got seeing eye dogs, we've got assistance dogs. Now we've got dogs that detect medical diseases like cancer and uh, help people with diabetes. So all these incredible payoffs that we get from the presence of pets in society. And, and let's preserve and protect the right to keep pets because a lot of pressures in every country on the planet to um, restrict pet ownership and to make it harder. Well, now you're here receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award, Which and you've, you've got a lot more life to, to give, my <laughs> thank friend. Thank you, thank you, Robert. I do feel a bit like an 18-year-old exactly. who's receiving an old timer, old geezer's award. Oh, but, uh, not at all, my friend. Yeah. But you know what? I mean, you really were, though, at, you've seen a lot of the evolution, and at the time that you started, you were doing things that the, the general industry wasn't going that way. What motivated you? Well, let's be specific. It was about what the dog trainers were doing in the 70s when I started this work. Um, dog trainers were using spike collars, choke chains, electric shock collars, uh, really harsh compulsive methods. Um, people, trainers said, dogs can't think, dogs don't have a brain, you know, they only learn by repetition and, uh, and association with pain or reward. Um, and we turned that on its head. You know, we went introduced reward-based training and if there were specific problems, like a dog that pulls on the lead, well, I invented a Holti. You know, we try to create products, invent products, that are available to the mass without having to use lots of brain power, without having to develop lots of skills. So we make, try to make dog ownership simpler and safer for everybody. Well, and you created numerous products. When you, when you look over that, what are you most proud of? I would reckon one of my most recent inventions, which is a, a treat-friendly muzzle, so that dogs that bite people, bite other dogs, do bad things with their teeth, um, can at least be safe whilst they're being retrained to not use those teeth for biting. Um, and it's called the Baskerville Ultra Muzzle, and it's the first treat-friendly treat one. But obviously, most people know me because I invented the Halty, which is also important because you know a lot of people have been injured by being pulled over by their dogs. A lot of the dogs have hurt their necks by pulling on the lead. So Halty's number two, I guess. Yeah, I mean, so many different things. Now, you have led to a lot of innovations as well in the training world. Let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah, well, as I say, in the bad old days, uh, the monks of Skeet and Cola, and if you read some of them, they're still available in many pet stores, and, and sorry, libraries and, and bookstores. Um, some of the most horrific dog training books written on the planet. And you know, there's still some pretty assertive, shall we say, dog trainers on TV and, and out and about. Um, by assertive, I mean that think that you've really got to show you the boss and be hyper dominant. Dogs aren't, don't have to learn that they're subordinate to humans by being violent towards. Um, you can do it in gentle ways, and you can do it by subtle ways using our superior brain power, making dogs work for everything that they get, which means maybe just engaging in a sit and waiting for half a minute. That's work to a dog. Um, and you, you, you know, really, so many people are bitten by dogs and injured by dogs, and mostly it's behavior of the victims that make these things happen. So if we can change victim behavior, or right. ordinary people's behavior, we greatly can reduce the number of dog bites. And of course, children are really high up on the list of injurious dog bites. So we've got to do a lot of education of parents and children on how to react to behave when dogs are around. Well, and speaking of education, not only have you been doing that for a very long time, but you're also an author or lecturer. Let's talk about the book for a moment. Okay, well, I've published three books. Um, this is my latest, The Perfect Dog. The Perfect is Dog. Is there such a thing as a perfect dog, perfect wife, perfect anything? I, I guess not. But really, this book is about payoffs and penalties, making training simple. And very often, the dogs, the things that dogs do that you don't like is because you've been inadvertently or unwittingly rewarding those behaviors. What was it in your behavior that made the dog scratch at the door or bark at the door? 
Well, it was because you let them in or let them out when they barked or when they scratched. Um, and so start changing the contingencies so the dog is only rewarded when he's quiet. And whenever he scratches at the door, he has to wait another three minutes timeout before you actually let him in. So that would be a, a simple case in point. Um, but you know, subtle payoffs and penalties. The penalties don't have to be unpleasant and, and shouldn't be. No more shock collars, no more spike collars, please. Um, just things like looking away from a dog, ignoring him, is a punishment. Uh, withholding a treat is a punishment for a dog and, and profoundly modifies their behavior. Dogs, if they were difficult to train, would never have become so popular across the world as they are. Um, and they are highly trainable. Every dog until his last breath is trainable. Well, I've, I've just got to say, I, it is such a pleasure to talk to you at any time, but especially right now. It, it is great that we are honoring you here at this event. I've got to tell you, you know, Super Zoo WPA couldn't have chosen someone better for the award. Well, I'm humbled because I think I'm the first foreigner, jolly foreigner, <laughs> to receive this. I've been coming to America, I've got so many friends in this country. Um, but it is a double honor to be uh, a, not a Native American who's uh, receiving this award. I've just got to live up to it. There's a lot more work to be done, especially in countries, not necessarily in America, but you know, countries like China that are just catching on to the pet keeping habit, the dog loving habit. Um, I want to ch really change the most populous country on the planet, China, and their attitudes to dogs, which are moving in a very positive, uh, desirable direction. Good, we need that, we need you. I know the folks out there are gonna wanna learn more about your methods, the things that you've done. What's the best website they can do that? Go on, online, um, have a website, www.companyofanimals.us company or www.companyofanimals.co.uk. They link together. You'll learn about the work we do, the place we do it, which is on a nice farm in Surrey, England. Um, but I'm over here and love to be over here in the United States as often as I can. Uh, my friend, thank you for everything you've done in the industry. It makes a huge difference. We've not finished yet, folks.